So, are you ready to start again? Yeah. It's all right. I'm okay now, really, I am. I just needed something to drink. Not that kind of drink, obviously. Uh, please don't think that since, you know, since it happened. <laughs> Honestly, I've never been much of a, a drinker. A, a glass or two of wine, something with the evening meal. Water's fine. <laughs> My mouth gets dry. It's the same with job interviews, isn't it? You have it all worked out in your head, you know what you want to say, but when you're sitting there in the room, you just, you just don't know how to put it into words. <laughs> you kind of dry up. You never know what they expect from you. <laughs> Sorry if I was a bit off with you when I came in and please call me Jenny. <laughs> It's nothing personal, really, but oh, I've had enough of these questions. Let's just run through it one more time, Ms. Harris. What do people expect me to say? I mean, it's not like any of this was my fault, right? I wasn't negligent. And I'm not saying people haven't been sympathetic, but oh, they do give me funny looks. Even friends and neighbours. It's like they're expecting me to crack up. It's a strange place to be. It's quite lonely, actually. I've been off work for six weeks now, paid leave of absence. They've been pretty understanding, the bosses and the union, supporting me all the way. I think they've all had training on how to deal with people who've been through this. People like me. Feels like they're working through a list. Ticking boxes. <laughs> That's HR for you. It's not that they don't mean well. Nobody would want to be in my shoes and too many have already been. Some people can't handle it. There was this bloke I knew at the depot. It happened to him three weeks before he was due to retire. Can you believe that? I mean, obviously they didn't make him work those last three weeks, but in a way that was worse. Because because it will always be his last memory. I mean, 30 years doing a job he loved, looking forward to his retirement party with his pals and then putting his feet up at home and taking care of his allotment. And then it happened, bang, right out of the blue. He never went back to work. Everyone said he shouldn't have to face it again. Compassionate leave. I suppose it was the right thing to do, but, but that was his last memory. His last ever day at work. He'll never forget that day. None of us will. Anyway, you wanted to know what happened. It was just, I don't know, ordinary. Some days the time passes by in a blur and you get to the end of your shift almost before you realise it and you can't remember anything. You get into a routine, I suppose. On that Friday, I was looking forward to the weekend. I remember sitting in the cab thinking about going to the football with my husband, Tom and our boy Jake. We're looking good for the promotion this season. It's a good day out. Anyway, the 1642 out of St Pancras. You do it so often you don't really notice much apart from the signals. Greens all the way, accelerating through Kentish Town, approaching West Hampstead. And I'm thinking about taking Jake out for his birthday meal. Oh, he loves his pizza. And then bang, I can't believe it. A woman has stepped off the platform and is standing on the track facing me, looking up at the cab. Bang, I hit the brakes, but it's too late. She's disappeared under the train, gone, bang. Screeching, a smell of burning, a jolt as we stop and then silence. Just silence. I sat there, a 
couldn't move. I couldn't even bring myself to look. People say, well, at least it was quick. It was over in a flash. Quick? It was like it was happening in slow motion. I can still see her looking up at me, directly at me. She had blue eyes. <laughs> she was quite young, 20s maybe. When I hit her, she looked completely calm. What makes someone do that? I mean, how desperate do you have to be? People say, well, it wasn't your fault. It was her decision. Very sad, but nothing to do with you. No way you could have changed the outcome. And obviously that's true. It's hardly a unique story. Suicide by train has become a thing. People wait for an express train that isn't stopping and they jump. People don't really know what to say. It's been hard on my family. Tom has been great. He couldn't have been more supportive. And my boy Jake too, although it's not really easy for him to understand. But even with their love and support, even with sessions like this, you still end up feeling alone, isolated. Be because only you can understand what it's like. Only you see the video replaying in your head over and over and over again. People ask me if there's anything they can do to help nothing really. Thank you for asking, but no. I, I just want to know who she was, that young woman who jumped in front of my train, and why she did it. A need to understand what happened to her on that day and why she wanted me to kill her. You've been very kind, really. But it's her I need to talk to. <laughs>